to 3x your permanent makeup profits for 2023 with goal setting. What's the secret to boosting your beauty biz profits for 2023? Well, it all starts with setting a goal first. And at the heart of every successful business are the goals they've set for themselves. You can manifest all you want, but until you put your plan into action, you'll be namaste in the same place as you are today, get it? Growing anything takes specific actions put into motion that domino into real progress. You need to go after what you want with clear and precise intention behind every step. Without goals, you have nothing to achieve or track, which leaves you floundering in the beauty biz abyss. And when you do make progress, you'll have no idea because you never set a goal to begin with in the first place. If you're struggling with achieving your business goals, whether it be marketing, sales, or scaling, stick around because I am going to share key areas you should focus on and how to apply them to your beauty business and 3X your income in 2023. And I want you to know my secrets on how I built two seven-figure beauty businesses. Because teaching women how to grow and scale their beauty businesses is what I do best. And I'm really good at it. Welcome to Pretty Rich Podcast. My name is Sheila Bella, founder of Sheila Bella Microblading. I am also the American Academy of Micropigmentation Board President, and I am the CEO of Pretty Rich Bosses. I am the mother of three sons and the proud wife of William James Rouge III. My journey started as a broke, I mean, broke, broke, server at a sports bar wearing a schoolgirl outfit serving beer and avocado fries. And I got fired from that job. <sighs> it was crazy. And within three years, I became a multi millionaire as a brow artist. When the pandemic hit and my salon was shut down, I was devastated until I realized that opportunity doesn't go away. It just changes location. So I built my second multi-million dollar business online, proving to my own imposter syndrome that it wasn't the business, it was me and my knack for making money. So how did I go from being an uneducated immigrant from the Philippines to being featured in Forbes Magazine, Bravo, NBC, and CEO Weekly. Well, all by the grace of God and realizing that I was my own Prince Charming. I had to be my own life jacket because I had more control over my life than I thought I did. And literally, all it took for me was to finally decide that I wasn't gonna be mediocre anymore. The conversations in this podcast are going to show you that you're not alone, that really none of us know what we're doing, and it's also gonna equip you with the tools necessary to help you do exactly what I should have done all along, which is to believe in myself, stop waiting for permission, and skip the line it's gonna help you create your perfect job and hire yourself as CEO. Because power is never given to you. You just have to take it. And hey, I wanna feature you on this podcast. And all you have to do is text me the word podcast to 310-388-4588 along with any and all questions that you may have, and I will answer them here, along with a shout out. Are you ready, beauty boss? Let's go. We're talking about goal setting. You've heard it a million times, set goals, work towards them, but, but, but then what? How do you do that? For most of you, the process is so abstract, you don't even know where to begin. I do this every year for my business and I'm gonna teach you how to do the same thing. I'm gonna share with you three key areas to focus on, along with a foolproof goal setting method and how to apply all of that to your beauty business. So let's goal set for 2023 right now, together. Come on, come on, don't leave me hanging. Eh, eh. That felt good, right? First, 
Let's dissect the process no matter what goal you're trying to achieve. Have you ever heard of setting SMART goals? SMART is an acronym which stands for specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. It is described as reaching a specific goal in a designated time frame defined by these five parameters as they relate to your goal. So for example, let's say the goal is you want to increase your bookings by 10% in 30 days. S, increase bookings. M, measurable. 10% increase. A, yes, yes, R, yes. T, in 30 days, get it? So before doing anything else, make sure to download my free guide to setting your SMART goal this year by clicking here, sheilabella.com forward slash SMART goals. You can click on the link in the description box or in the show notes. Once you've set your SMART goals, it's time to use the GST method. Have you set your SMART goal? Okay, great. Now let's do GST on it. GST method, pyramid diagram, top bubble, G. Branches out to the middle bubble. S branches out to the bottom bubble. T. G stands for goals. Big picture. End goal. End result you want to achieve. S stands for strategy. The method that you will use to get there. The steps you'll take. T stands for tactics. Tactics that fall within that strategy. Smaller things that need to get done that make up your strategy to reach your goal. Let's break down the GST method for our original goal of increasing bookings. G, increase bookings by 10% in 30 days. S, increase your marketing efforts. T, post twice a day on social media. Implement a referral system with existing clients. So setting SMART goals and then implementing the GST strategy as a surefire way to check every goal off your list and finally move the needle in the right direction. You can't just throw spaghetti at a wall. You have to have a vision and then an action plan in order to fulfill that vision. Now let's get down to it. So when it comes to the new year and increasing your revenue, where should you focus your attention? There are three areas you should be setting your beauty business goals as follows. Number one, financial, your sales and revenue goals. Two, growth. What areas in your business would you like to grow? Now this is gonna vary depending on what your focus is on the quarter or stage of the business that you're in. So if you're a new business and your goal is to grow your client list, then you might focus on your referral program. If your goal is to get more eyes on your business, then your goal would be to increase social media presence and increase your marketing. Now, if your goal is to increase profit, then you might focus on cutting expenses and saving for hard times and possibly even increasing your prices. Three, experience goals. This is where you measure the satisfaction of your customer experience throughout their buying journey. Measure the time it takes to fulfill the service, the quality of the service provided, business reviews, how user-friendly is your booking system, etc., etc. Most of you will focus simply on fulfilling the service, but don't monitor your progress, or perhaps some of you only focus on the financials. But here's a hot tip. If you improve your customer experience, they will be more likely to share about it, directly impacting your business growth and better yet, your finances. It's never too early or too late to set goals, but let's set some goals for 2023. Step one, plan. Time to prepare for the new year by creating a detailed plan. What are you going to do differently in your business this year? Planning the future of your business requires you to know where your baseline is. Where is your business now? Most beauty professionals avoid the numbers, but it's the first step to your growth. You need to know where you are before determining where you want to go. Duh. Step two. Know your clients. How many clients do you serve per month? Where are they coming from? In person? Social media? Referrals? What is your average service ticket? What are your expenses? Rent, insurance, licensing, utilities, payroll. Know what comes in and what goes out. Yeah, I have a video about that, by the way. It was the last one I posted about a week ago. Know your numbers, titled Key Metrics You Need to Know in Your Beauty Business. Go check that out after this. Step three, be realistic. Create a growth plan that's attainable. What percentage will your business grow year after year? Here's an example, 20% growth rate. Here's a chart. Year one, 40K plus 20% equals 
48K. Year two, 48K plus 20% equals around $57,000, $58,000. Year three, now you're making $57,000 plus 20% equals $69,120. Year four, $69,120 plus 20% equals $82,944. Year five, you end up at $99,532. If you started from zero, that's a 120% growth rate in five years. Step four, be accountable. Be responsible for what goes on in your business and get help where you need it most. Imagine what your life and business could look like if you stayed the course and were accountable. Set the goal, design a plan, execute. Your yearly plan should include the following long-term objectives, budget, and projections based on the last six months. If you have a team, a plan for each of them to grow personally and professionally, a monthly marketing plan, what promotions will you market for each quarter? Remember when I said that if you work on your client experience, that alone will impact your financials? The average business loses around 20% of their client base because they fail to attend to their customers. Pull out your notepad. It's time to pay attention. Goal, increase client retention. The G and the GST method. So picture this, two beauty businesses, one retains 90% of its new clients and the other retains 80% of its new clients. If both beauty businesses attract 20% more clients each year, but the first business retains 10% of those new clients while the second retains none of their new clients. Over the span of seven years, the first business will have doubled their client list, while the second will be in the exact same position. Stagnant. Setting goals for growing your client list is essential to increasing profits. So remember, there's a big difference between a loyal client and a satisfied client. Don't settle for just satisfied. There are tips to increase client retention so you can reach your growth goals. The S in GST. Most businesses lose customers. It's part of the journey, but a few actually track that number. You're busy creating new connections, attracting as many clients as possible to your business, but what are you doing to keep her engaged with your business? It costs you more to find a new client than it does to nurture an existing one, so don't let her fall through the cracks. You should be connecting with your clients regularly through email marketing, text marketing, social media, your referral program, etc., etc. Pre-book her next appointment. It might feel awkward at first, but don't let your client leave without having her book her next appointment, especially if the initial appointment went well. Your client is more inclined to listen to your advice after her initial appointment. So make sure she feels taken care of. Ask her how she's healing. Ask her how she feels about the treatment. Having the conversation right after the initial appointment while you guys are still in the honeymoon phase opens the door to potentially booking a different service with you. Three, get back in touch with lost clients. She'll be open to coming back if you frame it in the right way with the right offer. Do you know why she left in the first place? If you can find out why and remove any remaining objections while letting her know you still value and respect her, doing so is one of the easiest ways to fill up your calendar, which could potentially generate some of your most loyal clients because you took the extra step to resolve the objection and show that you care. For example, I'm guilty as charged of skipping around to different stylists. I didn't leave them for any particular reason. It was just, I just lost touch. If my last stylist were to reach out to me and say hello, just to check on me and ask and said that they missed me and that I should come in for a treatment, I would probably go. Stephanie, where are you at? I just, I don't know. I just, I haven't thought about it, I guess. I've been trying to do my own hair. It's not really going well. I don't know why I'm doing my own hair. I really shouldn't be doing my own hair, but I just, I guess I just need some attention. Oh no, do I, do I have abandonment issues? Four, schedule regular communication with your clients throughout the year. Not only based on your marketing schedule, but keep holidays and life events in mind. I'd like a happy birthday for my stylist. My nail tech, it'd be nice. It takes multiple touch points for someone to consider buying. Clients respond in a positive manner because it makes them feel valued. 
Five, deliver customer service unlike anyone else in your area. Deliver higher than expected service each time and every time. Implement systems in your business that guarantee that your client will have the same client experience every time they come in across the entire team because consistency and integrity without compromising ethics or taking shortcuts throughout the client's journey is crucial. Six, you're not gonna like this tip, but stick with me. Every time you get a complaint or a negative review, see it as a positive, thank the person. Why? Because it's an opportunity to get better. It's an opportunity to turn a dissatisfied client into a loyal client. Here's a not so fun fact. 96% of dissatisfied clients don't say anything. They just walk away. They might not tell you directly. You can bet they're going to tell their friends about it. And they'll also tell them how you handled it. Did you do everything in your power to remedy the problem? The money is in your client list and your goal is to ensure that list. Now that we've set the goal of client retention and listed out the strategies, it's time to come up with the tactics we're going to implement for each. The T in GST. Track lost clients, implement a CRM, and track each client. Most booking softwares have some form of client tracking. When were they in for their last appointment? How much have they spent on your services? So create a list of dormant clients whom you will reach out to. And for each existing client, make asking them to pre-book a part of the checkout process so it becomes part of the routine. Remember that list of dormant clients? This is where you will reach out to them by email or text, asking them to fill out a survey or ask for input on how you can improve. Frame it in a way so they feel their opinion is valued and will be used to improve your processes. You'll be amazed at how many people respond. Once they respond, reach back out to them, thank them for taking the time to raise their concerns and offer them a discount as a thank you. Reassure them that client experience is a priority and you look forward to showing them the improvements. Create reminder messages for upcoming appointments, a weekly newsletter, or simply send your clients a voice note telling them how appreciative you are of their business. Don't forget, happy birthday or I'm thinking of you messages. Those always surprise clients and go a long way. Implement systems to create consistent service fulfillment whether it's offering a fancy beverage, a hand massage while your client waits, or lighting a candle. The more consistency you create, the better, so each client feels just as valued as the next one. Give each client a gift card for a coffee shop in their aftercare kit as thank you for not drinking coffee prior to their PMU appointment. Create a video that includes all of the aftercare information and send it to them to reference their aftercare appointment. The ideas to level up your client's experience are endless. So get creative. Collecting social proof should also be a part of your checkout routine. Don't ever forget to ask for video testimonials or at the very least, send your client a Google review link. There you have it, a foolproof way to set goals for 2023. And remember, improving your customer experience directly impacts your finances. So start by setting smart goals. From there, you can focus on growth and finances. Sharing your goals with someone increases your chance of actually achieving them. So be sure to join my Beauty Biz Secrets Facebook group. It's a free community and I want you to go in there and share with other beauty bosses what your goals are for 2023. And let's hold each other accountable and show other industries what beauty entrepreneurs can do. Just go to Facebook and type in Beauty Biz Secrets. That's it for this episode of Pretty Rich Podcast. Bye. Hey, thanks so much for listening to today's episode of Pretty Rich Podcast. If you want to continue the conversation longer, check me out on Instagram. It's my favorite place to connect with you guys at Real Sheila Bella. I'm happy to answer any of your questions or simply to chat and get to know you better. And if you end up doing something super awesome, like screenshotting this episode and reposting it on your stories, uh, that would put the biggest smile on my face. Don't forget to tag me. 
I appreciate every share and love feedback from my listeners. Also, do you have my number? Do you have my number? Because uh, if we're going to keep hanging out, you should probably have my number. So you can actually text me. That's right. You can text me at 310-388-4588. And if you're sick and tired of doing business alone and you're interested in accelerating your success by hiring a business coach or joining our mentorship program called Pretty Rich Bosses, go ahead and just apply. Why not? Check it out. Go to SheilaBella.com forward slash apply and we'll schedule a free strategy session with either myself or one of my advisors. And of course, I got to include my kids. So here to send us off are Bo and Gray. Gray, say share with your friends. Share with friends. Please review my mommy on iTunes. Mommy iTunes. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Hey, Bo, can you tell everybody what our family motto is? Yeah. I can do hard things. I can do hard things. Good job, buddy.